In the headlines, the Police Welfare Association disappointed over government's proposal of a wage freeze for 2015 to 2018. 57-year-old Vivian Charles is free after the DPP discontinues a charge of murder against him. And a government-private sector partnership could be the way to go as Dominica moves towards construction of an international airport. I am Andrea V with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Thank you for staying with us. First up, the membership of the Police Welfare Association met on Friday following government's proposal of a wage freeze for the period 2015 to 2018. The executive of the Police Welfare Association left Monday's meeting with government's negotiating team on salary negotiations extremely disappointed and surprised. The word from Constable Jefferson Drago, chairman of the Police Welfare Association. I can tell you that the membership, I know they're disappointed. Police officers are saying that they should get adequate compensation commensurate with the work that they're doing. Drago says the role of the Police Welfare Association is to act as a trade union for police officers from inspectors to the lowest rank. We are not politically motivated. We are an equal playing field, all police officers on their merit. Do you get the sense that some police officers do not agree with your position? Well, in every organization, um, everybody will not be for you. Some will be for, some will be against. But the sentiments that I'm getting from all sections are that policemen, they're saying that they do for an increase. Even the sections who believe that are not speaking, all sections are speaking. There are those that cannot attend the meeting for some reasons or other, but they express themselves personally and tell us do not bend, stand to our 15%. Mm -hmm. They're going to fight for our 15% through discussion and dialogue. Government had initially proposed a wage freeze for public servants last year and ended up giving a salary increase. Remarking on that situation, Drago had this to say. So we are confident that the government will move the position yeah, through dialogue and continued discussion. Okay. To the courts now, after spending four years on remand awaiting trial, 57-year-old Vivian Charles walked out of court a free man on Friday. That was after the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions discontinued a charge of murder against him. Charles was charged with the murder of Richard Roy Lazarus of Trafalgar in February 2013. Richard's body was discovered 30 feet from the main road in a bushy area at Providence. His lawyer, Wayne Nori, has for some time now been questioning the state about his client's continued incarceration after it was discovered that the pathologist who performed the autopsy, a critical part of the case, would not be available for trial. The DPP filed a notice of discontinuance on the basis that the pathologist is absent. They did the matter via paper committal and the accused Vivian Charles did not actually have a chance to cross-examine her in the magistrate's court, so her evidence or her report could not be tendered. It's been four years I've been making, if I may say, in local parlance, a little noise about this matter. It made headlines, and um, they've been saying that they will bring the pathologist. She never came. Lots of agreements have been granted, and today the matter was scheduled for today, and the pathologist is still absent, and therefore the DPP in the circumstances filed a notice of discontinuance in the matter. Nordi said there are certain steps that can be taken to address the absence of a pathologist for court matters. There are certain things in law that can be done, and as the judge stated in open court today, that the law needs to be amended, as in other jurisdictions the law is different and the pathologist report can be tendered. So the message that maybe has to be sent is to maybe the legislators to amend the law so that it will be easier for the medical evidence to be adducing evidence, even in the absence of the pathologist. Meantime, Vivian Charles, as you heard, had been incarcerated for four years. So now that he is back in society, he says he is looking to stay out of prison. He spoke with Carlisle John Baptist outside court following his release on Friday. I feel very great and comfortable, and I appreciate the way the, my lawyer worked for me. And while he was on the field, 
and then he will do the successful. Mm -hmm. yes, You've been in custody for quite a while. Yeah, you four know, years. four years. Four years from since. Yeah, you're now integrated in society. What does it mean for you? Where do you go from there? Well, I want to better up my step. Yeah. And the things that pass me for times well, I want to keep it back to, to freshness. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And uh, what is the message that you want to send out to people out there um, given your unfortunate situation? Well, the whole fact is, well, the unfortunate shot is, well, I would like to tell them, well, to stay away from prison. It is not a good place to, you know, to stay or to go to or to make auditory things on the outside to get yourself in prison. That is not a good place. In other lead stories, government and the private sector are being encouraged to consider a partnership if Dominica is serious about constructing an international airport. The suggestion has come from the immediate past Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, the Right Honourable Denzel Douglas. Douglas, who is the serving opposition leader of that OECS country, told a forum of the business community on Thursday that a private-public sector partnership is the way to go on an international airport project. He was invited by the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce to speak on the topic an international airport as a development strategy, the St. Kitts experience. Business persons being able to travel to major metropolitan centers easily. Students being able to travel overseas. Prospective business partners being able to readily access Dominica from point farther afield. Vital inputs being able to get to Dominica in a timely manner, Dominica's exports being able to get to market without delay, greater, ven greater revenue streams for your hoteliers and tour operators. These are just some members of the broad-based pool that would benefit from the introduction of international e-links in your country. Dr. Douglas says his country made the decision since 1972 to diversify its economy, moving away from its reliance on sugar agriculture to making an international airport key in its economic development strategy. While he supports the idea of having such a development, he agrees that it is a costly venture. And it is because of this broad-based sharing of the benefits that a public-private partnership where costs are concerned, would be most essential. There is no denying the fact that an international airport opens a country to opportunities and to conveniences that would never exist in the absence of such a facility. At the same time, however, airport construction tends to be tremendously expensive under the best of circumstances. Douglas observes that Dominica's topography will be a major challenge and would have to be rearranged in this instance. Indeed, constructing airport facilities that can handle long-haul flights by international airlines will be extremely costly and would likely require, as was the experience in St. Vincent, the leveling of hills and the filling of valleys, in other words, a complete restructuring of nature's carefully constructed topography. Whether an international airport should be constructed in Dominica, when an airport should be constructed in Dominica, and under what circumstances an airport should be constructed in Dominica need to be the focus of a broad-based and in-depth process of national consultation. In related news, former president of Dominica and businessman Eliud Williams is advocating for a dialogue on the matter between government and the public. Williams addressed the DAIC forum in his capacity as vice president of the DAIC. We heard it. It came some years ago. We heard it again at election. It stopped again. And I think it's not something that we can escape. It is a discussion that really needs to be ongoing. And I think the point was made emphatically by you that ultimately it is what the people of Dominica would want, given the direction from the policymakers. 
Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has shot down suggestions that his government is not treating the people of the Northeast like the rest of the country. But Mr. Skerritt says the leadership of the community must be willing to be more positive and productive. The mainly agricultural region is represented by opposition parliamentarians. I want you to dispel any notion that has been inculcated in your minds that myself or this government um, doesn't like marigold people. That is foolishness. That is total nonsense. This is not true. It's, it's not true whatsoever. We have, we, we have nothing negative about Marigold. As a matter of fact, I can tell you, all of the times I've visited Marigold, not, not, not at one time anybody has been disrespectful to me. They're very respectful people in Marigold. Maybe one or two people who are troublesome and so forth. But by and large, Marigold people are respectful, cultured people. The Prime Minister also spoke to government's development assistance for the area. At present, the council has $300,000 to go towards the washroom program. Um, we will send some money very soon for some roads in Marigot to, to be improved. You understand? There's some roads in Marigot to be improved. Um, we started plans for the new, for the new um, hospital. Coming up, the latest on a solar project in the Kainago territory. Welcome back. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt says government is open to establishing a court dealing exclusively with the theft of agricultural produce or pretty larceny. He was speaking to the students of the Northeast Comprehensive School as part of their ongoing 10th anniversary celebrations. Skerritt told the students that it is possible to profit from agriculture. By the time a farmer plants something before it's it, it, it ripe, it's ripe, somebody's stealing it from him. So it's a major um, matter to, to us and so forth. And, and this is why we are not ruling out from the government standpoint setting up a court to deal specifically with pretty larceny to ensure we can put a stop to it. He went on to say that while pests and diseases are a threat, there is a demand locally and overseas for the country's agricultural produce. For the future of agriculture to be sustained, people like myself and yourself as young people must be more actively involved in agriculture. Because our parents who were involved are now 70s. You understand? And they still go to the farms. The question is, when they, when they pass on to another life, who's going to replace them? And that's why you see sometimes some farms are abandoned. The father was very hardworking. He built his house on the farm. He bought his vehicle every, every five or seven years from, from his farm. He sent his children to school. But none of the children want to go on the farm. So he has seven acres that are not productive. So we have to ensure we get more young people on the farms. The highly anticipated solar PV project in the Kainago territory is set to come on stream a bit later than anticipated. The million dollar Kainago solar PV project was facilitated by the Ministry of Kainago Affairs along with the Kainago Council with the endorsement of the Ministry of Health and the Environment. The project was implemented by the DCH Solar Giga GmbH from Germany and was completed over one year ago. However, according to Kainago chief Charles Williams, some kinks have to be ironed out before the solar project can be connected to Domlex grid. We have had to try, have tried it, um, we have had meetings with Domlex apparently for us to connect the facility to the grid. But during the meeting, we were told that there is some problems with, I think, harmonics on the line. We have since contacted the contractor to correct that. We're in communication with the contractor and Domlet together. And hopefully, as soon as possible, uh, maybe this week or next week, we will have the engineers, a uh, team of engineers, trying to correct what the problem is and for us to get hooked up to the line. The chief says another concern with this venture falls under the terms of the Power Purchase Agreement. A Power Purchase Agreement, or PPA, is a contract between two parties, one which generates electricity and one which is looking to purchase electricity. I think that is where some of our difficulty lies because according to the um, IRC, the Independent Regulatory Commission, 
we are only entitled to the avoidable cost and the fuel to charge to supply electricity, and I think that doesn't look very well. I have been discussing that with the parliamentary representative who is our, who sits in the cabinet, and he was saying that the government, well, according to IRC2, they have a contractual arrangement with Domlek, and that is already uh, established. In Europe, we know that the, the companies that is encouraging renewable energy gives to give compensate the people who are producing the renewable energy double the price of the of the energy that is produced by fossil fuel. Down here we're not even getting the price. Chief Williams believes these terms and conditions should be revisited if the country is serious about going green. Assuming that we we are as consumers paying a dollar per kilowatt hour of for for, for electricity. You will also see on that on that bill fuel surcharge, and what we're saying we're not even we're not even entitled to the whole of the fuel surcharge. We are entitled to a percentage of that. So I think I think that is a, of strong concern. And if Dominica is to go green, the government have to revisit its policy and see what it can do to 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 encourage more green energy in the country. President of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce is cautioning Dominicans that in-depth discussions and research need to be had on the issue of constructing an international airport. Kira Thompson-Ed was speaking at the annual DAIC Chuanit Luncheon on Thursday. Thompson-Ed drew reference to other Caribbean countries which have international airports and said that one of the major concerns in undertaking such a venture is location. Across the islands, who each share topographical challenges, location is probably one of the most difficult to answer. Finding a location in Dominica factors in every discussion related to air access. The northeast coast has been cited as the most appropriate location. Questions do arise. Economically, will this pose a challenge being positioned away from the economic hub? Are there environmental questions to be answered? From a business perspective, Will there be a justifying increase in the inflow of foreign capital from tourist visits? Will there be more tourist visits? Cost is another huge factor in constructing and maintaining international airports. Costs to build and costs to come with sustaining of the facility will need to be realized through increases in traffic and revenue. The management of an airport already tests profitability. A small airport, even more so. Operational costs, for example, your equipment factored in with handling and other related expenses, must see a steady inflow of an increase in revenue to be sustainable. This brings us to our traffic. Who and what? The DAIC president pointed out that justification to the airlines is another of the more immediate concerns with an international airport. In the case of Grenada, a seat commitment was offered to guarantee the necessity of the airlines. Basically, government guaranteed the airlines a certain minimum passenger load coming in. We had to sell it in Grenada. If the airline carried less than that minimum, then government paid the airline the difference between the minimum load guarantee and the actual number that was carried. Here is a conundrum. Do we build an airport in the hope that we can stimulate travel to Dominica and an expansion into our tourism industry? Or do we, can we, develop the infrastructure in hope one day of justifying an airport? Or do we just go along as before? The theme for this year's DAIC Chuanit Luncheon was an international airport as a development strategy, the St. Kitts experience. And the curiosity meter went through the roof on the grounds of the public library on Friday for Animal Awareness Day. As you are aware, it is Literacy Month and the students made their way to the public library for a chance to get real close to their favorite animals. A number of organizations collaborated with the public library to create this unique experience for school children. Among them, the Central Livestock Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, the Forestry Division, the Fisheries Division, the Veterinary Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, and a number of private owners of animals. Animal Awareness Day is a time where we transform the public library grounds to a mini zoo and we allow 
the children to interact and learn about both our domestic and our wild animals in Dominica. And I really want to thank the staff of the Roseau Public Library, headed by the librarian, Renita Charles, for the efforts that, was, that were extended for the event today. And as you can see, we have a lot more animals today. And even in terms of the weather, um, we have a good turnout thus far. Not too long ago, I did a lesson on farm animals. So this is a great opportunity to take them to view the different animals. One is a wonderful gesture and I hope it continues. The chief librarian is hoping that the annual event can be extended to Portsmouth as well so that the children of the north could be afforded the same opportunity as those of Roseau and Environs. That's news, your sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. A packed weekend of football awaits as a number of matches are scheduled in the National Leagues of the Dominica Football Association, beginning with the 2017 Domlek Women's League on Saturday. The DFA will kick off the Domlek Women's League with a grand soccerama at the Newton Plain Field. Prior to the soccerama will be an opening ceremony with addresses coming from the Minister for Sports, the DFA President, the DFA Women's Coordinator and a representative from Domlek, the league sponsor. The winner of the Sokarama will receive a cash prize of $700, while the runners-up will get $300. Five teams are expected to participate in two rounds of competition. An added feature this year in the Women's League will be a $100 incentive for the player of each match. The defending champions are New India Assurance Goodwill Runners. Meantime, the Under-15 Boys Zonal League will kick off on Sunday 12 March 2017 with two matches where Central Overcomers will take on Western Youngsters at 2 p.m. in the first match of a doubleheader at the Stock Farm Complex, while at 4 p.m. it will be South Stars United versus North Strikers. Meantime, in the Division I League, Digital Newtown Juvenile Academy, Harlem United and MV Max and Obamas will go head-to-head -head at the Newtown playing field from 4 p.m. on Sunday. And the DFA Sports Division Secondary Schools Girls Competition kicks off on Monday with three matches. Pierre Child Secondary will take on the Dominica Grammar School at 2 p.m. in the first match of a doubleheader at the Lindo Park to be followed by Convent High School versus Goodwill Secondary at 3.30 p.m. While at the Newton playing field, it will be Wesley High School versus St. Martin Secondary at 2 p.m. Back with more cricket, we can tell you that the Premier League of the Dominica Cricket Association begins on the weekend with two matches. At Windsor Park, we have Marino Blasters up against Desiderata Tremors. And over at Botanic Gardens, Dominica Cricket Academy will come up against Grand Bay Credit Union Colts. Matches begin in the morning and run from Saturday into Sunday. Meantime, West Indies all-rounder Andre Russell faces the possibility of having his anti-doping ban extended to two years after the Jamaica Anti-Doping Commission, JADCO, launched an appeal over the original sanction. In January, Russell was handed a one-year ban for breaking anti-doping whereabouts regulations three times in a 12-month period, which under the code qualifies as a failed test. Russell's lawyer confirmed the appeal will be heard with JADCO seeking the maximum two-year penalty. Currently, his ban runs until January 30, 2018. When the one-year ban was handed down, JADCO found that Russell had failed to adhere to whereabouts requirements on January 1, July 1, and July 25, 2015. His defense was that because of his cricket commitments, he had left it in the hands of his agent to complete the required paperwork. However, the JADCO legal counsel accused him of gross negligence. In related sports, despite the West Indies' loss against England on Thursday, head coach Stuart Law believes there are some positives that can be taken from the experience. He noted that England's performance had improved a lot between the 2015 World Cup and now. Similarly, he hopes West Indies can make positive changes to revive the team's playing ability to produce a more consistently competitive cricket product. West Indies lost to England by 186 runs on Thursday and lost the series 3-0. 
Finally, the sports division will stage the grand final of the district sports festival at Benjamins Park on Sunday. Eight communities have qualified for the final, namely Zikak Chance, Marigot, Casabruce, Crayfish River Salibier, Point Michel, Goodwill, St. Joseph, and La Plaine. Sunday's final will include football, cricket, netball, volleyball, rounders, basketball, and a track and field competition among the top eight districts on island. The sports division instituted the district sports festival in 2010 as a strategy to rejuvenate sports at the community level while bringing people together for recreation and socialization. Sunday's event is carded for 12 noon. And game one in the semi-final round of the island-wide white oak rum domino competition will slam down on Sunday with rockers from Paybush up against dangerous public enemies. Also on Sunday will be a clash of wake-up stars from Portsmouth versus Dolphins from Scottshead. The matches are carded for Indian River Bar in Portsmouth. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Do have yourself an awesome weekend. And as the rain keeps coming, we check in with the Met Office for the latest weather update. Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'm your presenter, Annie Coretta Joseph. Weak and stable conditions generated by a southwards dipping frontal boundary continued to affect the island chain throughout the course of the day, and this resulted in generally cloudy skies over Dominica throughout the course of the day. Radar imagery indicated some scattered showers mainly over the central and the southern portions during the afternoon. Conditions for tonight, cloudy to overcast at times and windy with some scattered showers. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies with scattered showers and windy conditions as well. However, as the day progresses, a gradual improvement can be expected. Persons in areas prone to flooding, landslides, and falling rocks, you are advised to continue to exercise caution. Sea conditions, moderate to rough in open water, with northerly swells expected to be up to 10 feet. A high slope advisory and a small craft warning remains in effect up till 6 p.m. tomorrow, Saturday. Persons, especially on the western northern and eastern coast you are advised to continue to exercise extreme caution taking a look at conditions for the next three days again tomorrow saturday mostly cloudy and windy with scattered showers at first becoming partly cloudy to cloudy with some scattered showers during the afternoon sunday and monday partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy skies with a few brief scattered showers. A gradual reduction in wind speeds can be expected into early next week. Across the region tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies with scattered showers can be expected throughout the Lesser Antilles. On the international scene, partly cloudy skies in New York and London, clear skies in Miami and Beijing, and some thunderstorm expected in Caracas. The sun will rise at 6.16 a.m. and set at 6.15 p.m. For up-to-date information, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and have a good night. To end the news, the headlines again. The Police Welfare Association disappointed over government's proposal of a wage freeze for 2015 to 2018. 57-year-old Vivian Charles is free after the DPP discontinues a charge of murder against him. And a government-private sector partnership could be the way to go as Dominica moves towards construction of an international airport. 
Feel free to contact us at news at marvin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis. And to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful weekend.